Hi everyone, I'm Todd Nock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, how long has it been since I've done an art video? I've been so crazy with work. Uh, what with my Stargirl uh, miniseries, a six issue miniseries, now collected in trade paperback. My Magneto miniseries, issue four just came out of that four issue miniseries and the Magneto trade paperback will be out in early 2024. And of course I've done so many, many, many covers for Marvel and DC and um, with more projects and covers to come. But uh, I had to take some time off during my crazy, hectic schedule to draw up this Young Justice sketch cover. Uh, this Young Justice sketch cover is special to me in many ways. One, I love drawing Young Justice. I love doing that comic book back in 1998 and 2000 to 2003, the early days of my career, because I got to work with one characters that I love and uh, really enjoyed doing this series, but also working with comic book writing legend Peter David. Uh, he became, I was a fan of his, his Spider-Man comics, his Hulk comics. Uh, he, he did uh, Star, uh, Supergirl, Aquaman, and I got to draw Young Justice with him. This guy is a writing legend. Hopefully you've read his Star Trek novels. He's written a lot of uh, episodes for different TV shows. This guy is a prolific writer and a really great guy. And he had a, uh, a stroke last year, a, a stroke and cardiac arrest, which really affected his health and his ability to work. And and so there's been a GoFundMe to help raise funds and, and the, the recovery has been slow going and his, he and his family still need help. So I'm auctioning this piece off, this, this sketch cover off on my eBay account. You can uh, find a link to that in my uh, the video description below as well as a link to the GoFundMe page if you are able to make any donation to help Peter and his family. So um, let's get right into the art and I'll share some of my tips and tricks and answer some of the questions I've received on my different social media as we go. So let's get drawing. All right, so we have this Young Justice uh, blank sketch cover, which is the, the Brian Michael Bendis, Patrick Gleason, uh, Young Justice era, not um, not the Young Justice era that uh, Peter David and I did because there were no sketch covers at that time. So, But still, it's a Young Justice sketch cover, so it works, it plays. So I'm drawing, I'm gonna draw Impulse, Robin, the Tim Drake Robin, and Superboy. Superboy from the Reign of Superman storyline that he would, when he was introduced after the death of Superman back in the 90s, who's, uh, this Superboy is Connell, or uh, also known as Connor Kent, who is half human, half Kryptonian DNA. So he's not full Kryptonian. So his powers are a little different. Uh, hopefully you've read those stories um, and, and you're familiar with this character. So right now I'm just doing the rough shapes, just roughing, um, each character in, starting with Impulse in the in the bottom, then we'll move up to Tim, then up to uh, Superboy. Now, uh, I'm using an HB lead Statler Mars uh, drawing pencil. HB is a great lead for me because it's, it's um, not too soft and not too hard. If it's too soft, then it gets too, too dark, too waxy, uh, really smudges up the page and is difficult to erase. I don't like too hard of a lead. That's more for like drafting, like if you're going to be doing a sort of drafting engineering type illustrations, then a harder lead I, as oftentimes I believe better for that. Definitely not for the work I do. I used to use a hard lead earlier in my career. I don't know why I did that. It was not the best choice. So um, HB is that it's the it's the porridge that Goldilocks picked. It's the baby bear's porridge. It's not too hot, not too cold. It's not too hard. It's not too soft. I guess that's more along the lines of uh, the the bed that Goldilocks picked because Papa Bears was too hard, Mama Bears was too soft, Baby Bears was just right. HB lead is my baby bear lead. So. Um, I went way too far off on that. So uh, I'm roughing in the shapes, just getting in these basic shapes and the pose. So um, angling the body kind of to the left, impulse is kind of skidding into the scene here is my approach for uh, drawing impulse. And um, I'm utilizing the life drawing skills I developed over the course of my studies and my career um, and the style that I've developed. It's uh, Really our style is just the way we like to draw, the way we like to make our shapes. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're, a lot of people say, how do I find my style? I say, don't worry about finding your style so much. Just focus on having fun drawing. Draw the way you like and your style will emerge. You'll be influenced by some of your favorite artists. That's totally okay. Um, but you'll find over time, the more you work at it, you move away from, um, trying to draw just like your favorite artists, but you, you just have that flavor of your favorite artists um, and and your your flavor, your, your main flavor, the, the that, that style 
develops into something recognizably you, not a clone of list any awesome artist that exists out there. Jim Lee, Mike, uh, J. Scott Campbell, uh, Arthur Adams, anyone you you could you could you know pretty much every artist influence another artist. I know I had my influences. In fact, uh, this is a good time for me to uh, answer one of y'all's questions because I had a question that came in, which is which comic book legend is or was the most influential on your work? And for me, easy to say, Arthur Adams was. He influenced a lot of us starting in the, the like mid 80s to present day. He's influenced a lot of creators because he was such a unique style, but he was influenced by his favorite artists. But as a kid, I discovered his work and he's a big, he's probably my most influential. Other artists that really influenced me, I would say would be Rick Leonardi, Walter Simonson, Alan Davis. These were the X-Men artists that I read in, as a kid in the 1980s, along with others I could say, Mark Silvestri, um, uh, J, uh, uh, John Bogdanov, Brett Blevins, then that leads into the late 90s guys like Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, Eric Larson, would, then moves into the early 90s guys who were breaking in around my the time I was breaking in, like Umberto Ramos, J. Scott Campbell, and the list, Michael Ringo, and the list goes on and on and on. A lot of more, uh, all of them inspirational and some influential to one degree or another because you can always learn from the people who are have gone before you. Uh, but my encouragement is to don't, we do, it's, it's, I, I believe it's better to not try to mimic them so much that you're a carbon copy clone. That's not as interesting. We have already have a Jim Lee and his name is Jim Lee. It's okay to, be, to learn from Jim Lee. We all have to one degree or another, I believe, or in some way, maybe have learned from him um, or any other favorite artist. But to have an exact mimic of Jim Lee is, it's like, I might as well go, <laughs> look at Jim Lee's art then, you know, so so really let that let your style develop over time. So um, as you see here, I, I've just about got impulse pretty much r r roughed in, just adding a few more details like the little tabs and the buckles on his wrist uh, straps, uh, readjusting this leg here um, for a little more support. I didn't really care for the way I had his uh, right leg, um, the lower leg kicking back so far. Um, gonna start to rough in the uh, lightning bolts that run down the center of his costume here. Um, yeah, and then just kind of mirror that on the other side. Now, I'm keeping in mind the, the, the angle of the leg. So we see the, the stripe come down the front of the leg, front of that lower leg, but the upper, Oh my gosh, excuse me. So now, and, and then putting it, now here I am putting the um, the the stripes down the the other side. I have to, well, I want to mirror that that look. So um, uh, just getting some of these, more of these muscles roughed in here. All right, so now, uh, oops, sorry, I guess I'm wanting to, Add just a little more detail to his hair here. Um, when it comes to hair, you find kind of the root, the 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 hairline of of the of the of the character, and then you're pulling from the 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 hairline. The roots are coming out and then away. You kind of create these chunks of these shapes of hair, and then you can add uh, wisps of hair through there to help kind of create that flow. But it's not like we have to draw each individual hair. Just tightening up the face just a little bit and his little ear wingy things that the flash has on the sides. Um, I'll have lightning bolts coming off these uh, to indicate his speed force speed kicking in here a little bit later on. Not If not in this video, then in the inking video for sure. So um, right now the plan is uh, sketch the whole thing out in this video and then in subsequent videos ink each character in their own video and then color each character in their own video. A little more detail here on the hands. Just kind of double checking my math here. Not really doing a lot of drawing, but just, just tightening things up just a little bit to help communicate to myself what are some of the key shapes I'll want to consider when I move into doing the inks. All right, so now let's get Tim Drake Robin in here. So I'm gonna move Tim 
So where I have impulse here on the left, as we're looking at the screen, I, uh, yes, uh, get my left and right inverted, but yeah, the left side of the <laughs> cover. Now I move to the right. I wanna put Tim all the way to the right side. Um, put impulse down towards the bottom cause he runs on the ground. Got Tim standing just a bit behind impulse, facing his body the other direction. So where impulse is facing to the left on the left, I'm putting Tim facing on the right to the right. Uh, this is uh, so that if, if the both characters were facing the same direction and there's not really a reason for that where they're both looking that direction, like there's something that's happening to the left that they'd both be facing to the left story-wise, then if for, a, for a cover image like this, I want to turn the body a different direction. It, I think it's more interesting for the eye design-wise if one character is facing one direction, another character facing the other direction, the opposite direction, makes it less stagnant, it makes it less uh, stiff, I think. It, it just creates something visually that, that's pulling the eye in different directions design-wise. So we've got Tim here like this, uh, kind of keeping in mind his, how his legs would fall behind impulse. And uh, let's see, kind of got Robin in a little bit of a kind of a crouch stance, uh, a little bit battle ready. And here in the enough, uh, initial sketch stages, uh, as you see, like with uh, Robin's uh, right leg, I just sketched him over, over impulse, just so I can see how the full leg will follow through behind Impulse's uh, body because I don't have to ink it. It's just there as a note to me to make sure I've got that leg in the right position instead of drawing it to Impulse, then skipping to the other side of Impulse's negative space and then continuing the leg. Might not be an accurate length or shape to leg. I might as well just sketch it right on through. Helps me do the math a little bit better. So I'm gonna to start to rough in Tim's uh, head here and just kind of the basic shape of the hair. He's got a bit of a shorter haircut compared to Impulse. Got the eyes and rough in the domino mask, indicate where the nose will be. Let's extend the chin there a little bit. And, 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 and Robin is rarely a smiling uh, character. Dick Grayson as Robin, he was pretty smiley. Jason Todd as Robin, he was kind of sarcastically smiley. And it's not to say Robins don't smile, but when you're working in Gotham, there's less to be excited about, less to be happy about. So oftentimes in Young Justice especially, uh, Tim Drake was more of our our um, guy that had to put up with all the crazies, uh, the craziness of Impulse, the craziness of Superboy, uh, and everybody else. So um, he was not unlike the Martian Manhunter in the 80, late 80s Justice League, Justice League America with Blue Beetle and Booster Gold and Black Canary and Guy Gardner and Fire and Ice. I always saw Robin as similar to, similar temperament as to, to Martian Manhunter, the, just kind of Face palming. I can't believe I have to work with these these crazies uh, in a sense. So I'm um, going to rough in the uh, bow staff here. Oh, so to my point <laughs> with Robin, I'd like to give him just a little bit more of a serious face. Um, oftentimes in in, in, uh, in illustrations like this to kind of convey his more serious get the job done sort of attitude. But not to say he can't smile or doesn't smile or has good times, because these are his friends. Definitely has good times with his friends. And uh, there's that that brotherhood and camaraderie. And then when we introduced the girls in issue four, uh, you know, it really became a really great family feel, which I enjoyed. And But I always saw him as more of the serious character amidst, amidst the other uh, more kind of wild or goofball characters. Um, in, in the, the the very fun and funny stories we would tell in our original Young Justice series, um, so I'm uh, keeping in mind the collar and the the uh, cape, and as I uh, readjust the size of his fist, there I, I slendered in the the knuckle just a little bit because the uh, the the arm the hand was a little too big. And then I bring down the upper arm to the forearm, have a little bit of foreshortening as the arm is coming a little more towards us as it holds the bottom part of the bow staff, overlapping the uh, cape, uh, having it falling behind everybody here just a bit. I like to jump around in my illustrations. I'll, I'll work on one thing and then something else catches my eye and oh, I'll, I'll add that. Now Superboy here. So we see here we have the space that's a little more in the center. 
is where we're putting Superboy. So that each character is there in their own sort of section. Uh, Impulse has the left, Robin has the right, Impulse uh, or Superboy has kind of more of the center. And because he can fly, we can have him kind of lifting off just a little bit behind them. So we can get a little more of a, he's not hidden too far behind because he's also standing on the ground. Now let's put him up in the air a little bit. And then we get to see a little bit more of his costume, especially that sweet uh, Superman logo. So while I uh, rough in Superboy, let's let's uh, let's take another question. All right, so we have a question here. Do you have any recommendation for art books? Um, my my recommendations, especially if you're looking to be a comic book artist, is to check out pretty much any how to draw comics book. Um, there is the uh, Stanley's and John Buscema's How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Almost every pro, comic pro I know has that book. I have that book. Um, but it, really any, any of the how to draw art books from all sorts of publishers are gonna teach you the basics. And that's where you wanna start. Learn the basics. Learn the, the initial uh, aspects of storytelling and then you build from there. You can study and build from there. But if you've never done this before, definitely learn the ABCs and you can find that in most any uh, how to draw comics book. A lot of people ask about anatomy books. I would recommend uh, the anatomy books from uh, Bern Hogarth, which is the one I learned from, from my art teacher at the Art Institute of Dallas way back in the day when I was younger. But uh, Andrew Loomis and uh, um, Bridgman, uh, why am I forgetting his first name? I want to say George, but I know that's not right. Bern Hogarth, Andrew Loomis, George, I, I, I gotta say George Bridgman, I need to look this up. I'll probably put a note here saying <laughs> what the, what the, um, that Bridgman, uh, his, what his first name is. But they are the, kind of the th three of the classic anatomy masters. And uh, I'd say look into those. If, you're, if you can find them at your local library, give that a go uh, or search for them online and see, see which one grabs your fancy. Some people prefer one over the other, but uh, they're kind of the three most commonly known and, and, and taught from masters from our school, at least from back in my day. Um, if there are new ones out there, I'm not aware of them or familiar with them at this time, but I'm always open to discover and learn of uh, new artists of all sorts. But uh, those would be my, my, my three I would recommend. So we've got Superboy here. Uh, we, we, we're kind of getting the pose going. Uh, get the jacket roughed in here, get that collar, pop that collar of his leather jacket, and then the S shield. Get the, Start to get this drawn in. Now when I was younger and I was learning to draw the S shield, it intimidated me. It was such a unique shape and the, the shape of that S you know, it's got to be just right, and it was always very overwhelming. But once I kind of learned the diamond pattern and how to put those, uh, put that S in there, and having to do it over and over and over again, it became second nature. I started to feel confident in it because I was practicing it over and over. If you've seen my channel, if you've watched my videos in the past, you probably heard me say, I don't like to say practice makes perfect. I like to say practice builds confidence. So keep practicing to build confidence. Take perfection, set that off to the side. It's kind of an unreasonable expectation. Perfection helps, or per, per, bah, perfection on the brain. Perfection is off to the side. Practice builds confidence. We'll just do the blooper reel here right as I talk. So I don't, don't, don't like the, the, the pose of that hand, of that fist. That hand was um, not the angle that I wanted. I didn't feel it, it was the way I wanted it to be. And that's okay. So I just grabbed my art gum eraser there, uh, erase, and, and now I can try the, the hand from a different angle. It's okay to erase, it's okay to rework something. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're putting perfection off to the side. It doesn't have to be perfect that first time out. Think it through, let, let the, you know, let, let the puzzle build as, as you go. So that's totally okay. Um, a lot of people think, oh, it was, it's shameful to erase. It's not, it's not. No, we need to. We gotta, we want to figure out the, 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 the best approach and, um, we put something down and, well, at least for me, once I start to see it come down onto the paper, um, if I don't like it, erase it, let's try a, a different take. Maybe I go back to the original, maybe I don't. Maybe I find something new. That's okay, we're thinking through the process and that's what's most important. And that's pretty much it. This is the rough sketch and this is kind of what I'm gonna build off of in future art videos here uh, as I work on this series uh, when I start to move to inks. Um, 
I've just given myself just the, the really basic shapes that give me the confidence in knowing what it is each of these characters will be doing and how they'll spo they're supposed to look. So um, yeah, there we go. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed uh, this rough sketch video here and uh, the, the tighter videos, art videos will be coming soon. So please stay tuned. Feel free to subscribe, like this video, share this video and comment below. It really helps out the channel and I appreciate your support. Um, thanks so much for hanging out. I'm Todd Knock, keep on drawing, keep having fun. Bye bye everybody. Hi everyone, I'm Todd. Let's try it again. Help raise money for my uh, Young Justice writer friend. I want to redo this whole thing. My Magneto miniseries. It's a four issue miniseries with issue four just now hitting the comic book shops and the trade paperback that collects all four of these Magneto issues into a trade paperback. I think I just repeated myself. <laughs> I've been really busy with work and uh, hopefully that, nope. Gosh, it's been so long since I've last done a video series here on my on my channel, and uh, thank you for your patience. Um, let's see, I, I bleh, what the camera stand, no worky.